हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कंसर्निंग द प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एट एंड स्पेसिफिकली विद द डायरेक्ट ट्रैप केसेस इन दिस केस द अक्यूज वॉज कॉट रेट हैंडेड देर वॉज रिकवरी ऑफ मनी फ्रॉम इस पॉकेट बट डिस्पाइट ऑफ दैट द कोर्ट हैज एक्विटेड द अक्यूज ऑन द ग्राउंड दैट द डिमांड हैज नॉट बीन प्रूव सो वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू एम्फेसाइज द की पॉइंट इज दैट The demand is required to be proved. If demand is not proved, then the accused could not be convicted and prosecuted under the Prevention of Corruption Act. I think that you got the point. In this case, which I am going to discuss, the following five questions, the basic five problems had been discussed. What are the basic element of Section Seven and Thirteen One D of the Prevention of Corruption Act? Number two, what is the basis of prosecution under the Prevention of Corruption Act? Number three, under what circumstances Section Twenty of Prevention of Corruption Act could be invoked? And number four, whether the mere recovery of money can be a ground to convict the accused? And number fifth, the modus operandi while dealing with such cases under the Prevention of Corruption Act, because it is very easier for us to say if demand is not proved. But what parameters are to be seen while considering the fact of demand? First of all, I want to clarify you that the judgment has been pronounced by Honorable Canada High Court on 13th of Feb 2024. That is a recent judgment on the point. The citation is the State of Karnataka versus L. Dorai Raj. In this case, the accused has been acquitted, and finally, the state has filed the appeal as per the protocol of Section 378 of CRPC. In this case, the following points are uncontroverted. Number one, that the accused is a public servant. Number two, the complainant has come to him regarding certain work, and it is an allegation. And now the controversy arises. It is an allegation of the complainant that to release certain fund, he had demanded rupees five thousand as illegal gratification or undue advantage. The complainant submitted that he is not willing for such amount, and that's why he approached to Lok Ayukt. and as per the advice he approached to cbi and finally a report is given on that verification has been done and finally the accused was caught red handed and also he was charged in the meanwhile subsequently he was charged and the prosecution led the evidences and accused has submitted only one document and trial court after appreciating the oral and documentary evidence acquitted the accused from the charges the state in the appeal has raised the following concern number 1 in this case at hand the complainant has proved the case beyond reasonable doubt and apart from that his testimony is corroborated by the punch witness and by the shadow witness but the trial court has totally consider the set factum properly and the same resulted in the impugned judgment and that's why it is liable to be set aside The second submission is that there is pendency of work, and pendency of work is one of the most important criteria to conclude the motive on the part of the concerned accused. And apart from that, there is demand and acceptance, which is duly supported by the evidence. But despite of this, all these facts had not been considered. In addition to this, numbers of citations, such as Bhagwan v. State of Maharashtra, Shankar Bai v. State of Gujarat, Vinod Kumar Garg v. State, C M Sharma v. State of Andhra Pradesh. Suresh Chandra versus State of West Bengal, Phule Singh versus State of Himachal Pradesh had been relied upon. On the contrary, the accused has opposed the appeal by submitting the following contention. His submission is that the punch witness and shadow witness are totally grafted, because if their testimony is considered, it will be appeared that there is major contradiction, and that's why adverse inference is to be drawn as per Section 114 sub clause G of the Indian Evidence Act. His submission is that there is no independent corroboration, and complainant himself is an interested witness. In absence of independent corroboration, the accused could not be convicted. He submitted that the demand and acceptance is not proved. Demand is signed going on, and he relied on judgment of N. Vijay Kumar v. State and Neeraj Asta v. State. In this judgment, the view is that mere recovery is not sufficient. The demand is required to be proved. So the primary key is that. the court in its judgment has drawn the following conclusion 
एज फार एज अ लीगल थ्योरी इज कंसर्न नंबर वन द डिमांड एंड एक्सेप्टेंस इज साइंक वन ऑन बट इन कंपेयर टू एक्सेप्टेंस डिमांड इज साइंक वन ऑन इफ डिमांड इज नॉट प्रूव इवन दो देर इज रिकवरी ऑफ मनी द अक्यूज कोड नॉट बी कन्वर्टेड वाइल अपलाइंग द सेट प्रिंसिपल टू द केस द कोर्ट हैज ड्रॉन द फॉलोइंग कंक्लूजन नंबर वन द कंप्लेनेंट इन दिस केस हैज नॉट सपोर्टेड बिकॉज इन दिस केस ही हैज नॉट गिवन द स्पेसिफिकेशन whether the accused had demanded or accepted the alleged bribe or not number 2 the accompanying witness is also not supporting the case because he was standing outside the chamber of the concerned accused and apart from that there is a major contradiction in term of single and the other proceedings the court submitted that even though there is recovery there is seizure but despite of that the accused could not be convicted because as per the legal guidelines mere recovery of money cannot connect the accused with the crime and apart from that the judgment of cm girish babu and b jayaraj is also relied In these cases, it has been specified that the accused could not be convicted under Section 7 and 31 D of the Prevention of Corruption Act merely on the ground that there is some recovery of amount. Absence of demand of illegal gratification and mere recovery of money is not sufficient to constitute the offence, and that's why the judgment deserves quite importance in that scenarios. The court also relied on judgment of C M Sharma, as I told you, and B J Raj. and the court submitted that if the demand is not proved because the complainant has not corroborated the demand and apart from that the accompanying witness and the shadow witness is giving the different versions regarding the same in that scenario it could not be said that the demand is duly proved if demand is not proved in that scenario no presumption of section 20 of pc act could be drawn because in the matter under prevention of corruption act the case is required to be proved beyond doubt it means there should not be any ground for doubt if there is some doubt in that scenario the case becomes suspected and in that scenario no presumption could be drawn so the court has given the answer in negative rejected the appeal and finally given the discretionary benefit to the concerned accused so this judgment entirely provides us the following four remedy number 1 demand and acceptance is signed by non if demand and acceptance are not proved the accused could not be convicted mere recovery is not sufficient in absence of demand no presumption of section 20 could be drawn and accused in order to be convicted for prosecution and conviction of accused under section 7 of the pc act it is required that the prosecution has substance duly corroborated and duly admissible as per the protocol so that the accused could be convicted in absence of which the accused could not be convicted so apply this principle on your case and as far as demand is concerned just remember that there are two person who prove the demand complainant and the accompanying witness if there is a major contradiction or complainant does not support the prosecution or he turned hostile or partly hostile in that scenario you might have the best case to be acquitted on the floor so remember all this point apply all this point on your case and definitely you will be succeeded without any worry so see you friends in the next video till then jai hind jai bharat jai shri ram jai balaji ki